Let's take you across the Atlantic all the way to the Black Forge Inn in Dublin, Ireland, where we are joined by Team McGregor coach John Cavanaugh. John, as a longtime coach, I want to talk to you coach to coach, man to man. Now, Connor was very adamant about getting that first group of 155 pound prospects. Then he was given the second group of prospects. Was this something that was discussed as a team? And also, were you hoping to get the vets at 135? Because now you had to coach against Brad Katona. Yeah, what's up, coach? First of all, uh, a pleasure to be speaking with you. And um, we just finished watching episode one there. It's, it's, it's looking great. It's, I know it's going to be a great season, a lot of drama, a lot of action. But uh, yeah, on, on, on the team picks, we wanted to get Lee Hammond on our team. He's um, quite new to the pro game. He's been with us a long time, training with us a long time, but he's only been a pro for about a year now. And Connor wanted to get him under the wing. In contrast to that, Brad Catone has been around the game a long time. He's won the Ultimate Fighter before. He's been with me for a long, long time. So the way it worked out was we knew that if we picked uh, Lee, we probably weren't, were not going to get Brad. Just the way they, 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 they broke it up, that we knew we got the, the, uh, the new blood. They were going to get the veterans in the 55, and then we knew they were going to pick the veterans in the 35. But Brad Cantona, like I said, he's a, he's a veteran. He's been around the game a long time. And we just felt Lee would maybe do better being under our direct contact. And hey, to have Brad over the other side and learning a few new things from different coaches, he's probably sick and tired of hearing my voice. So good for him to get something new from uh, Chandler and those guys. That's a very smart move when you guys is part of veteran move. I applaud you for that. Now, Initially, during the first training, you guys had sparring right away. Connor jumped right into the sparring. What was your first thoughts on the team after that first sparring session? Yeah, I'll be honest. I was uh, hesitant with, uh, with Connor's decision to have them sparring right away because, uh, you know, not, not to ruin the magic of TV, but we were only with the guys for a few days before they had their first fight. But and actually, I thought it turned out to be a really smart move that I sort of got the nerves out. They were put right into a pressurized situation. And you, you know what it's like, Dean, when you're facing somebody in a sparring situation that you don't know, it's not a teammate. It can be quite competitive early on. So although we did have them spar right away, it was under control. We had a lot of coaches on the mat to make sure if things got a bit spicy, we could cool it down. But it, I thought it was a great move to get the guys settled in. And, um, you know, by the end of it, we could see that a lot of the guys were, we had the new bloods. We had a lot of guys with, with good skills on the mat. And, uh, yeah, it, it got everybody, I thought, a little bit settled for what was going to come. Now, I saw Connor jumped into that sparring session. I'm sure he had a lot of fun. <laughs> How has coaching this season rejuvenated his love for the game? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, for me, the love uh, of the game with Connor is always there. Uh, Connor has a lot going on in his life, different businesses, different things he's involved in. But every time I talk to him, there's only one topic on, and that's mixed martial arts. We're talking about it, we're doing it. And uh, for me, I hadn't actually been around Connor in a while. And then we, we went up uh, to kind of get things started uh, on this season and see him in there. And we had a really good sparring partner uh, as part of the team. And to see him being in there and, and being able to go kind of full tilt early on, it was it was kind of exciting for what's to come. Coach, the last time we spoke, you did the Dean Diaries out in Abu Dhabi with me, and you were coaching Connor to fight Poirier. Now, for this whole season of The Ultimate Fighter, you were coaching alongside of Connor. Can you tell me which Connor you like better? <laughs> um, yeah, I missed out on the, uh, the previous season that Connor was involved in. I just had too much going on with the gym, and I couldn't be away for that long, but for this season, I made a, a kind of a bit of a pact with my wife. I said, look, I'm going to be gone for a while, but this is something important. It's, you, you, I don't have to tell it to you, but for everybody to be part of an ultimate fighter season, it's, it's a huge box to tick for me as somebody, you know, in love with the sport. So uh, I made the commitment to go out. And, and for me, uh, Connor used to coach my boxing class. Uh, before he was a, you know, a, a UFC star, he was part. He was part of the coaching team for SPG way back in the day, and I always enjoyed sitting in on his classes. He was a, a really passionate, a very technical coach, and I actually picked up a lot of things uh, working alongside him this this season. So, 
I don't think it's any secret to say that Connor and I have quite different personalities <laughs> and how we approach things. But just from a, from a technical point of view, I actually learned quite a lot just listening to him. So I really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.